You are welcome to be seated. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Today I want to share with you in our series of the Devil's Trio, the second one, the second topic is, is Jezebel attacking me? Is Jezebel attacking me? And I believe that this is one of the most important sermons that I've preached in my whole life. Because of all the difficulty and oppression and hassle that I had yesterday just typing it, I want to encourage you today to forgive me if I speak so loud, forgive me if I jump on the stage because I'm passionate to break the Jezebel spirit in individuals, in families, and in the church. Amen. Amen. Let me explain to you before I go on with the sermon. The spirit of Jezebel is not Jezebel's spirit. It's a spirit of Satan. I believe it's Satan himself. Because Satan was the one that stood up in the heavens against God and said, I will be like God. And God says, no, 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 it doesn't work this way. I kick you out. But Satan influenced a third of the angels and they were kicked out with him. So it's a spirit, I believe, truly, at the heart of Satan, even Satan himself, that functioned in two places in the Bible, we can see. Actually three, there's actually more. But the first person that became a carrier of this spirit was Queen Jezebel. And Satan invaded her life, and she became a carrier. She was the carrier of this satanic spirit, which I believe Satan himself. And that's why we call it the Jezebel spirit, because that's why we hear from it uh, for the first time in the Bible. But secondly, you get recipients of the spirit that functioned through Jezebel. And in the Bible, it was Elijah, the prophet. Amen? So Elijah, the prophet, he was the one that received the attack and the onslaught of Satan through Jezebel. Is that, does that does it make, make it clear? You can be a carrier of this satanic spirit. Let's call it a Jezebel spirit for the ease of reference. You can be a carrier of it and be like Jezebel and be like King Herod the Great. Or you can be a recipient thereof like Elijah. So it can happen in your family that your father or your mother has a Jezebel spirit and they handle your family like that. But you are the recipient thereof. But I want to show you how the Jezebel spirit functions. Because God wants to set you free. He wants to set the carriers free, the carriers, those that are like Jezebel and those that are like King Herod the Great and others, those that are like Jonathan. He, you can be a carrier, but you can also be a recipient. And I want to make that very clear because that you will understand what it's all about. Ask the question, is Jezebel attacking me? Is that satanic spirit from the heart of Satan himself, is that attacking me? Am I carrying it myself, or am I a recipient thereof? Now, we read of the Jezebel spirit in the Old Testament, the first time in 1 Kings 18, uh, verse 23 onwards, we see this spirit of Satan works through Queen Jezebel. Then in the New Testament, if you go to, to Revelation 2, verse 18, the same spirit now functions in the New Testament, in the New Testament church. And very specifically in the church of, how do I pronounce that word wrong? Tyre. Tyre, it's actually Tyatira or ty whatever. Tyatria. Amen. It's not the church of Tyres, it's Tyatria. Amen. So it's one of the churches that the angels speak to, one of the seven churches in Revelation 2 that Jesus speaks to and the angel speaks to the church very specifically. Church of Tyatira. Now let's read in Revelation 2, verse 18 to 23. One Bible calls the heading of this paragraph the corrupt church, but listen to this. And the angel of the church in Tyatira wrote, these things says the Son of God. Note it. These things says the Son of God. Of God. 
who has eyes like flames of fire and his feet like fine brass. I know your works, your love, your service, your faith, and your patience, and all as for your works. The last are more than the first, which is all good, but listen to this. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allow, the church allowed, that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess, you see what she does? Yeah, it's a she also, but I'll also show you it's men because the spirit has no gender, it can work through anyone. Who calls herself a prophetess. So she calls herself a prophetess and she is being allowed by the church to function in the church. But see what happens. Who calls herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants, these are the people in the church, to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. And I will explain that now. And I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality and she did not repent. Indeed, I will cast her into a sickbed, one of the judgments. And those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation, unless they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he who searches the minds and the hearts. And I will give to each one according to your works. And you see here, it works very, very clearly. The angel is speaking New Testament to a New Testament church and say, hey, amongst you, the spirit of Jezebel or Satan's spirit is functioning through a person. You are allowing this person. This person is seducing my servants with sexual immorality and doing offerings to other gods that they should not do. Okay? Remember the early church, New Testament, was just after the law. So offering to idols and all those things were, were very in the order of the day. So yeah, the Lord says, no. You must, number one, not allow her. You must not tolerate that spirit of Satan through men or women. Don't tolerate it. Because for those who tolerate it, you will have the same judgment. You will have the sick bed. You will have great tribulation. And great tribulation is a list of things, and I will give it to you a bit later. Because in that time, in Acts 15, we read of when the Jews... Became, became Christians, and the Gentiles became Christians, um, the people wanted to force them to do something else. They said, if a Gentile must become a Christian, then the Gentile must be circumcised. And Paul wrote again, that said, no, 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 it doesn't work this way. But what Paul warned against, and what the Jews warned against, was very simple, that Jezebel is all about defiling the person. Amen? Defiling the person, which means sexual immorality, is inward defilement. But if you offer to, to idols, strangle things to death, and offer things with blood, in the New Testament, that really means you offering things to some spirits or things, or you seek advice from idols or other spirits, and in doing so, you are not honoring God. That is outward defilement. Are you with me? Still with me? Okay, stay with me. Now let's go back to the New Testament in Revelation 2. Verse 18, clearly, defiling yourself inwardly is sexual immorality. Defiling you outwardly is doing what you want. Do you catch that? Sexual immorality, defile yourself inwardly. But offering to idols and all the other stuff is New Testament meaning you do what you want. You're not following the word. You are a Christian, you're spiritual, but you still do what you want. So you're busy with idols and other things that does not honor God, and, and you, you, you get advice from other spirits and other things and whatever and whatever, but actually that says, I do what I want. And that's actually one of the traits of Jezebel. She does what she wants. And that's what God wants to really set us free from. And this is where where witchcraft and rebellion and stubbornness and manipulation control and unlawful power that she takes, insecurity, rejection. This is where this, all of this comes from, and I'll explain to you in a moment. So the Jezebel spirit, you may ask me, but, but Pastor Carl, what is the solution? I want to say stop defiling yourself by sexual immorality. That's number one. 
Hello? So if you are doing it, stop. If you are not doing it, well done. Number two, stop doing what you want and refuse to change. Because God is speaking to us as Christians and we're refusing to change and we don't do what the Bible says. So actually you're busy with other foreign idols, you're busy with sexual immorality, if you're not busy with that, you're busy offering up idols and things like that and doing things, but actually what that means, New Testament, you're doing what you want. And it doesn't matter who talks to you, you you're not humble, you, you make as if you're humble, but you're not. Inside you're not. You're not humble, you refuse to change, and you don't want to do what God says. And you may be a wonderful Christian, spirit-filled, fantastic, but you may be a carrier of the satanic spirit that functioned firstly through Jezebel. Or you may be a recipient like Elijah, and I'll explain that in a moment. The second thing the Bible says in Revelation 2 is repent. If you recognize this morning, I'm a carrier, repent quickly. If you feel I'm a recipient of that, then you need to do something because you cannot tolerate the Jezebel spirit. It brings judgment of God, either the sickbed or great tribulation, one of the two. And it will kill your children and your children's children and their children and their children and their children and their children. That's what Revelation 2 says. That's what the angel says to that church very specifically. Stop tolerating or allowing the Jezebel spirit in your midst because it will destroy you. And those that are the carriers of the Jezebel spirit, stop with it because you are destroying lives around you. Amen? Are you still awake, guys? Make sure that your neighbor stays awake. You see, to some this morning, I believe God is really giving grace to you. God is extending in His grace. You, you are hearing a sermon that you perhaps have never heard before, but God is extending grace to you to repent today. Repent today before the sun goes down. Or either stop Jezebel in your life, or either face God's dealings with you. Face it. Because that's what Jezebel did. She was not afraid of God. She killed these prophets. If she had the chance, she would have killed every single one of them. She killed God's prophet and had no regard for God. Nothing whatsoever. But let me tell you, ask yourself the question, is Jezebel attacking you? That's your question. And if you ask that question to yourself, then you must look for people who openly or silently, please listen, excuse me that, I, that I'm preaching so loud, but I, I can tell you I'm so passionate. I've got my sword out for the spirit. Where I see it, I will kill it. We will not tolerate it in this church. And you will help yourself to not tolerate it in your family. And you will do yourself good if you are a carrier of the spirit to get it out your system. And to go for help. I say, Lord, I repent. Please help me. So, how do I recognize? Is it attacking me? Look for people who openly or silently, openly or silently, silently, behind the scenes, in their hearts, manipulate, control, are insecure, come from a, from a background of rejection, have pride, Arrogance. You see, pride and arrogance can also be silently. Hello? You tell a guy what to do, he says yes, but he doesn't do it. You know what I'm saying? Rebellion. You can have silent rebellion and silent stubbornness in your heart. But what is rebellion? Rebellion is 1 Samuel 15, 23, where, where Samuel speaks clearly and he says, rebellion is as witchcraft before God. Stubbornness is as idolatry before God. Guys, this is a serious sermon. It is saving lives. Because if you continue with this, you are going to die. Because great tribulation will come upon you. Sickbed may come upon you. And, and you know what I realize? I realize there are some churches, it may even be this one, that have tolerated the Jezebel spirit and have been suffering under great tribulation and even sickness. Because we tolerated it and we never understood it. But it takes a prophet of God, your current senior pastor, to recognize it. 
I say, you know what? There's something functioning. God is speaking to me about witchcraft. He's speaking to me about the Jezebel spirit. And the third topic you can hear next Sunday. So you will not hear this in churches. Because the Jezebel spirit will want to keep you silent. You see, this thing works this way. If there's anyone in your life that you want to confront but you actually dread confronting that person because you're afraid to face what will happen when you confront that spirit. A Jezebel spirit is very close. Hello? King Ahab. King Ahab, we are well known with King Ahab. He's a guy that does nothing. He's lazy. He's, he's, he's uh, what is a good word? He, I think apathy is a good word. Uh, he does nothing, takes no responsibility. The spirit flows through Jezebel and he does nothing. But if you ask me, uh, do you think King Ahab was a conqueror? Because we just know the laziness and the apathy and the doing nothing and Jezebel ruling everything. But do you think King Ahab was a conqueror? I've got good news for you. The king of Israel that conquered the most land was not King David. It was King Solomon. The second guy that conquered the most land was King Ahab. The third guy was King David. Now you can be a conqueror like Ahab, but you can still be in bondage to Jezebel. Wow. Wow. Great conqueror, but you're still in bondage to Jezebel. You say to me, but, but Pastor Carl, uh, you're talking about women. What about men? I'll show you two men. The first one is King Herod the Great. King Herod the Great had, <laughs> he had absolutely every single one of the traits of the satanic spirit that functioned through Jezebel. Jesus' time. What did King Herod the Great do? He was insecure. He manipulated. He told the wise men, listen, wise men, please come back to me and tell me where this new King Jesus is because I also want to worship him. No, 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 no. You are lying. You are manipulating. You are insecure. You've got a big problem because you are afraid. You want to kill the wise men if they come and tell you and you want to kill Jesus. That was his agenda. King Herod goes one step further and he comes to a place and he banishes and kills all his wives. And the Bible says, even his most favorite wife, he, was, he, he felt sorry about that, but he also killed her. Hello? A great guy, huh? What's the next thing that he did? He killed all the babies under the years of two years old. Does that sound like a secure king to you? No. What is the last thing that he did? The last thing that he did was... <laughs> In practicing this manipulation, this control, this insecurity, this rebellion, pride, and arrogance, what does he do? He kills his favorite son that must become king five days before he died. You know that? Now, if you talk about a Jezebel spirit functioning through a man, he has an excellent example, Herod the Great. There were more than one Herod, but Herod the Great specifically. Now, I want to ask you the question, is there a Jezebel spirit in a person around you that is affecting you? Are you like Elijah? Because Elijah was affected by the Jezebel spirit, by the spirit that functioned through Queen Jezebel. Is there something that is affecting you? The first thing that will affect you, <coughs> excuse me, 1 Kings 19 verse 1. You can look on the board. Verse 19 of 1 Kings 19 says, and Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah has done. And also how he had executed all the prophets with a sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so let, the gods, so let the gods do to me and more also if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. What she's saying to him, she's sending a messenger to him with a note or a scroll and says, I'm going to kill you. You'll be dead by tomorrow. And when he saw that, when he saw what? When he saw the scroll, the message, the letter from the queen. When he saw that, he arose and ran for his life and went to Bathsheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. 
Why did he go to Bathsheba? Bathsheba was in Judah. It was outside the jurisdiction of Jezebel. And you say to me, what are you talking about? About, about jurisdiction of spirits. You have a prince of Greece and a prince of Persia. Amen? Remember that in Daniel? Prince of Persia, prince of Greece. I wonder what the prince is over South Africa. Have you asked yourself that question? Elijah, just a moment ago, killed 400 Baal prophets by calling fire from heaven. Just before that, I think it was, was, was the, the, the God Ezra, if I remember correctly. He killed 450 prophets with a sword. So he just killed 850 false prophets of serving false gods. And what happens? And here, what happens? A lady threatens him. And a spirit of fear manifests and he runs. And he runs so far, he runs out of her territory. And I say to myself, God, he runs out of a jurisdiction area, out of a country completely, and runs to a place in Judah that is not in her area, not under her authority. But let's look a bit further. The spirit of Jezebel, you know when it has power? When we tolerate it. When we allow it, it has power. And I say to myself, God, help us. Lord, give me, give me the reason for this thing. You know where Jezebel comes from? It's rooted in rejection. Because Queen Jezebel was given to King, King Ahab in an alliance of her father that wanted to make an alliance with King Ahab. He was, she was given to King Ahab. Not loving King Ahab, given to him. So she was rejected by her father. And guess what? She had a controlling mother. And then she became super dominant herself. Amazing. Why are you so silent? Are there people of you that fall in that category? Mm. You see, the spirit of Jezebel rooting in rejection, insecurity and rejection in people opens yourself up. Even if you are wounded in your early days or wherever in your life, I think this woman was severely wounded, given to another king. So rejection, insecurity started functioning. So what did she do? She opened herself. And that is how the spirit is working. The spirit will also try and come close to authority. That's why she wanted to kill Elijah, which was a prophet and authority in the country that did great things for God. She said, I will kill this thing because it's another authority that is higher than my authority. Exactly what Satan did in heaven. Do, do you get the picture? Are you with me? So, many people have a Jezebel spirit. And I find in my experience that many people with a Jezebel spirit has been rejected by their father and has a dominant mother. They've been so wounded and so they fear rejection. So, they are insecure, and because they fear rejection, they're insecure, and they have fear in themselves. They want to control everything around them. They want to control their family. They want to control their family to such an extent because they fear rejection from the family. What happens at the end if you do that? If you control your family like a Gestapo or like Hitler, what happens to your family? In the end, when they grow up, they reject you in any case. Your children don't come and visit you. They just come when they want something from you. Guys, am I, are you awake? Are you alive? Say amen. Whatever, but do something. I believe I'm sharing revelation with you. And God wants to set you free. Whether you're a carrier or whether you're a recipient, He wants you free. That's why I'm preaching the sermon. And I truly believe one of the things that that, that happened in this whole situation, controlling your family like that, they call you a control freak. Do you know anyone like that? And a subtle way that this Jezebel spirit wants to come close to, to, to leaders is wanting to become their friend. So this, this person, this normally the Jezebel spirit wants to become close to a leader, but the leader has got no idea what's behind the spirit. 
actually to destroy. And let me help you further and say to you, well, praise God. I found another example of this satanic spirit that functioned through Jezebel, functioned through someone, and I'm sorry that I, I blow all your sermons and your knowledge about covenants. It functioned through Jonathan. Thomas functioned through Jonathan. Let me give you the, you see, we, we, I think sometimes we read the Bible, and, and I'm as guilty as what you are. So if I say you, look, there are three fingers pointing at me. Understand that? So we think the thing of the covenant between David and Jonathan, there's actually three covenants, but that covenant between David and Jonathan wasn't this wonderful, fantastic covenant. No, 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 no. It was a one-directional covenant. It was Jonathan that was saying to David, and every time he made a covenant with him, Dave, because he knew David was the anointed king. He knew his father Saul was after David to kill David, so he wanted to save himself. So he made a covenant with David the whole time and say, please don't hurt me, don't hurt my family, don't hurt my descendants. That's what he did. I never knew that. But let me show you something else. <laughs> oh, this is amazing. I tell you, Saul was looking for David to kill David five times. Three of the times Saul found him. And the only guy who knew where David was, was Jonathan. Think of that. One step further. One-sided covenant. You see, the common practice in those days was very simply that if a new king comes, he will kill all the previous king's descendants. So what was Jonathan doing? He was making covenant after covenant with David. One-sided. He was working both sides of the fence. Working both sides of the fence. 1 Samuel 23, 16 says, Then Jonathan, listen now. Yeah, Jonathan does the same thing as Jezebel. He's usurping and taking unlawfully power. Are you still awake? You still alive? And Jonathan, Saul's son, arose and went to David in the woods and strengthened his hand in God and said to him, Do not fear, for the hand of Saul my father shall not find you. You shall be king over Israel, and listen to this, and I shall be next to you. For even my father Saul knows. Now who promised Jonathan the second place in the kingdom? Let me take you to Revelation 2. And this woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess. Hello. Not an appointed recognized prophetess who calls herself a prophetess. Jonathan comes and says, and I shall be next to you. Now who promised a second place to King David, to Jonathan? Assume power unlawfully. Second trade. So what we see in, 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 in Jonathan, we see this manipulating covenant because he knows David is going to be the anointed king. So he knows when Saul kings David, he becomes king. But when David king Saul kills king Saul, then he's second. And he's safe. Jezebel spirit functioning through Jonathan. Now if you knew that, Put up your hands. Even I did not know this. I always had the concept of <clears throat> this wonderful covenant. But do you see how important it is to read the Bible properly? Do you see it, my brother and my sister? God wants to make you free today. Number three. When David was running, once running from Saul, he knew there was something wrong. And you see, it says to me, when there is a Jezebel spirit functioning, like Queen Jezebel with, with Elijah the prophet, yeah, David is running again. But he knows there's something wrong. Who told him? Because he walked with God like that. Amen? So listen to this. Psalm 41, verse 6 and 9. David is talking about Jonathan. He says, and if he comes to see me, he speaks lies. His heart gathers iniquity to itself. When he goes out, he tells it. You see, when these guys go, it's part of their pride and their arrogance. 
They work both sides of the fence, but they must tell someone, even if they tell their wife or their husband. They must boast because there's arrogance in them. Even my own familiar friend in whom I'm trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted his heel against me. Psalm 55, verse 12, 20 and 21. It is not an enemy who taunts me. I can bear that, David says. It is not my foes who so arrogantly assault me. I could have hidden from them. But listen to you, verse 13. It is you, my equal, my companion, my close friend. What good fellowship we once enjoyed as we walked together in the house of God. Psalm 55, verse 20. And as for my companion, he betrayed his friends. He broke promises. His words are as smooth as butter. But in his heart is war. His words are soothing as lotion. But underneath are daggers. Mm. So guess what the Spirit of God does? He exposes the spirit that functioned through Jezebel, now functioning through Jonathan. He exposes it to King David. And David knows, this guy, this is not my friend. This guy is functioning the same spirit that functioned in Queen Jezebel. Amen. What happened to Jonathan? He died. What happened to King Saul? He died. Amen. So guys, I believe the first effect Jezebel has on you, or that spirit, I call it absolutely a spirit like Satan that functions through a person. The first thing is fear. The second thing is isolation. Why isolation? Because I read in 1 Kings 19, what did, what did Elisha do? Ah, Elijah do. Elijah ran into the desert. He ran to Bathsheba, into Judah, out of the jurisdiction of, of, of Queen Jezebel. And you know what he did? He went there and he was isolated. To be isolated is not good because you sit in a corner alone with yourself and you become depressed. Solitude is something different. Yeah, I, I also have that in my heart. To, to, to have solitude, to, to be like Jesus, to go away, pray in the mountain, pray in the evening, to go away, to go out of Gauteng and leave you with the demons here and go and pray. Solitude is a good thing. But isolation is not. So sometimes the leader or the prophet feels to isolate himself because of the onslaught of Jezebel. And there's even some people that are carriers of the satanic spirit, you don't know it. Because you've never dealt with the rejection in your life, the rejection of your father, you never dealt with your controlling mother, you never dealt with the pain and the hassle and the chokos in your life. So guess what? Satan says, yes, some more. Yes, some more, booty. Yes, some more. Hello? Uh, is God saving your life this morning? Look at your neighbor and say, thank you, Jesus. The next thing that, he, that Jezebel will affect you is fear, isolation. The third one is exhaustion. Leaders become tired. There were times that I ministered that I became so tired. My wife is my witness. That I'm so tired I want to get in my bucky those days and just drive to beyond Mokotopong. Don't know, even know where that is. It's in Mpopo. Tiny little place. There's only three goats there. And the chief. With five wives. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. You see, the problem with exhaustion is the Bible tells us in, 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 in one. Exhaustion is if you tolerate the spirit of Jezebel. It hates God. It hates leaders. And it wants to kill you. And if you are Jezebel in your family, it will destroy your family. And if it doesn't destroy your immediate family, it will destroy your, your children, and they will die, and they will have great tribulation, and they will have sickness. If you don't repent, Revelation 2, verse 18 to 23, if you don't repent, you see, God always gives a way open. Controlling mother out the pit of hell. So if you're a mother that controls, for God's sake, stop it. And if you're a father, don't reject your child. It's got huge consequences. 
And if you leave your children like that, they grow up with those wounds and those hassles and those chokos, and they open themselves to other things that they know nothing about, and they begin to be insecure, and they feel rejected, and they feel they must now begin to manipulate, and they must control their family, and husbands do crazy things, and wives do crazy things. And they are stubborn, and they are rebellious, and they keep it inside of them, and some of them are silent. Some of the Jezebel, the spirits of Satan through Jezebel, and through us as carriers are silent. Some of they are so silent. But all of a sudden, David knew Jonathan betrayed him. All of a sudden, I knew that there's something like a Jezebel spirit that functions in leaders. They want to kill leaders and kill the church. And if we tolerate that Jezebel, Jezebel spirit in this church, if I tolerate it, and Pastor Geva tolerates it, it will destroy you and me. Because it says, and those that Jezebel leads into sexual immorality and offering idols, they will have the same job. Do you understand how serious this is? And do you forgive me for, for shouting? Because I cannot do anything otherwise. I'm so passionate about it. My sword is out against Satan. Because we will not allow this. You see, what, what, what it does, exhaustion does, uh, 1 Kings 19 says, yeah, Eli, uh, Elijah, this mighty prophet, he runs away, runs into the desert. He gets to a broom tree. A broom tree is one of those trees that they, you can cut it off. It's got a lot of leaves and, and things, and you, you can sweep with it. That's what a broom tree is. You can see it in Mokowata Pong. They sweep all over the, they take everything out around the house, and they sweep everything clean. Have you ever asked the people why they do that? I must not go off the point. Yes, Lord, I will not go off the point. Have you ever asked the guys there in, 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 in Kosa land, there, Old Trans Sky, Lusigi Sigi, Yatonda Galendo, Lusigi Sigi, Ikua, there, Butterworth, you know, there were close to Dada. You know, all those houses that are clean around, right around, even Yamukotapong. They scared people. They say, hey, hey, Mlungu. I say, why are you sweeping this place? It's full of dust. It's, ah, well, we can't get in yoga, cow gushle. We can see the snake when it comes. We can see the snake when it comes. You see, if you're like King David, you're close to God. You see the snake when it comes. When you walk close to God, you see the snake when it comes. You see the, you see the snake before it comes. And when it approaches over that open piece of land in front of your house, you take your big tubu, which is your kiri, and you take that kiri and you hit that snake and you kill it one time. Bye-bye. And that night you sleep nicely because your children, you open your windows, you're not afraid anymore. There's no fear. There's no isolation. There's no exhaustion. Because Elijah became so exhausted, he went, he slept under that tree. And the angel came and woke him and gave him a bread uh, on hot stones and gave him water. And you know what he did? And the Bible says, and he went and he laid and laid down again. Last sentence there, 1 Kings 19.3. He slept twice. Outside of Jezebel's territory. Exhaustion. So you feel alone. You're depressed. You want to die. You're exhausted. You're so tired. You've got problems sleeping even. Presence of a Jezebel spirit. Let me go to the next one. Another effect. Depression. Yeah. This mighty prophet of God, Elijah. When 1 Kings 19. What, what does he say? He says, 1 Kings 94, and he sat down under a solitary broom tree and he prayed that he might die. I have enough, Lord, he said. Take my life, for I'm no better than my ancestors who've already died. He said, Lord, I want to die. One of the things with depression is you want to die. You can't sleep. Or you sleep too much, or you can't sleep. What did Elijah do? He slept when he was out of the side of eternity. He slept much. Because he didn't sleep in the territory. There was sleeplessness. Do you get what I'm trying to say, my brothers and sisters? So let's go one step further. You see, Jezebel's spirit wants to destroy God's leaders in authority. And let me tell you, the tragic thing in churches sometimes is people do not live for the calling. If you live for the calling, you live with your whole life. You give everything. Some of the people work in churches just for salaries. They're hoarding up things just for themselves. I work at the church just for a salary. But there's no spiritual connection. Don't understand nothing in the spirit. You think they do, but they don't. Hello? Not talking about this church? 
Maybe he is, well, I don't know, but don't hope so. But a lot of churches, it's like that. You see, because it's common to leaders that goes under this severe, severe oppression by the spirit, satanic spirit that flows through either a woman or a man to want to die because they just can't handle it, you know. One of the things of depression. Like Moses said in verse 15, he said, I think he said something like, if you treat me like this, please kill me here and now, Lord. So he, say, he says to God, I'm finished. I'm finished with all these people. You know, just kill me. You know, kill me. Uh, Jeremiah 20 verse 14 says, Cursed be the day I was born. And if you read the rest of verse 15 on, he curses everyone. He curses his mother, he curses his father, he curses everyone the, the day he was born. Why? Because a man is so depressed of all the hassle and the pressure in Israel, he can't handle it anymore. Look at Jonah 4 verse 3. Take my life from me. You see, today, if you as a leader have thoughts of suicide, there's a proof that there's a presence of a Jezebel spirit close to you. Hello. Let me go one step further. You see, you must deal with Jezebel. You can be gracious to the person, but you cannot be gracious to the spirit because it is Satan himself. It must be dealt with. It cannot be tolerated. Let me give you a few, coming in for a landing, giving you a few or more of Jezebel effects. If Jezebel is close to you, if that satanic spirit through a person is close to you, even amongst your leadership, even amongst people that work with you, even amongst in your family, if that spirit is functioning through the father, the rest of the family will have things like immoral sexual thoughts. Because Jezebel was the queen of that sexual immorality. You'll have thoughts like that. You live a clean life, you're spirit filled, but all of a sudden you get these funny Bizarre sexual immoral thoughts. Second thing that will, will happen is, is people around you will make you feel guilty because they manipulate. Say, so you don't want to be my friend. You don't want me close to me. What, what, what? They're not mature in themselves. They don't know what's going on. Some of them don't even know what's going on. Third thing that happens is bizarre or near tragic accidents. If I can tell you in my 15, 16 years of full-time ministry, how, how many times there was close Close, close, tragic accidents happening to me, personally. Hello, my wife is my witness. And now I understand why. Hello. Strange or prolonged illnesses. The Jezebel spirit wants to steal, kill, and destroy. Steal what? The Jezebel spirit steals your peace. Because you know there's something wrong, but you don't want to confront the person because you, know what you, you don't know what you're going to get back. Because of the strong control and manipulation, and even if it's silent or even if it's openly. So it wants to, to steal joy, peace, and confidence. That's what Jezebel stole from King Ahab, stole his confidence. And he became ap pathetic. He became a pathetic guy that, that had apathy and did nothing and was lazy and what, 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 what. Let's go one step further. She will kill you. That spirit will kill you with sickness and accidents. It'll destroy you with depression and fear. Now you ask me, if, if, if I'm in any form of leadership anywhere, how do I deal with this Jezebel spirit? Let me tell you, address it with a person immediately. Remove that person from leadership immediately. Unless that person repents, and even if the person repents, make sure that all those chochos that functioned in his or her life, that they are sorted out before you restore that person. Hello? Modern time. Let's go one step further. Make very, very sure that in leadership, you even remove that person close from you because you can't walk with a person that doesn't want to change, that is not humble, that is not teachable, and that displays constantly, constantly, silent stubbornness, rebellion, or even open stubbornness in the rebellion, and all of the other things that go with it. You agree with me? If you keep that spirit close to you, it will destroy you. It will stop the work of God in you. It will stop the purpose of God in you. It will stop what God has called you for. Because that's what Satan did. That's why he works through people, men or women. And he still works today. 
And this is why I'm preaching this sermon, because God wants to save your life today and my life. He wants to save this church and many other churches and all the guys that's looking on live stream. He wants to save your church, my brother. Your church. He wants to save your church and your church wants to save it. That's what it's all about. And this is a serious matter. So, in conclusion, I'm sorry that I'm speaking so long. But my God, I tell you, if you listen to this sermon, it will save your life. It will save your life. I conclude, worship team can come. Deal with it immediately. Do not tolerate the Jezebel, the Jezebel spirit. Because if you do, you fall amongst those that are judged by the Lord. You can't tolerate it. Number two, if you're a leader and there's anyone close to you that feels they have the responsibility to look after you, that you as leader don't mess up, there's a Jezebel spirit. You know why? Usurping power unlawfully. Because if God has called you and appointed you, he keeps you accountable and you're in a team of elders and no one else. Hello? Does it make sense? Yes, you're in the team. Yes, you're the leader of the elders. Yes, you're accountable. But God keeps you accountable through those people, not through some other guy. 1 Kings 19, the Lord spoke to, to Elijah in a still voice, not in the fire and the earthquake or anything like that or the wind. He spoke to him in a still small voice. So today, God will speak to you in a still small voice. He will speak to you through his word. God will go and he will speak to you through godly counsel. God will speak to you and you will have peace on things. And even if you say to me, Pastor Carl, but I am in a situation like that. I recognize this. Ho -ho. Then I want to say to you, God is giving you a way out. Say to your neighbor, a way out. He has the way out. And God calls Elijah in 1 Kings 19. He calls him. He says, Elijah, what are you doing here? He says, Elijah, come to this place. He says, and when you come to this place, anoint King Hazel or Hazael, anoint him. Anoint Jehu, which is like prophet. Anoint Elisha, which is a priest that comes after him. And he says, Jehu will be the one who kills Jezebel. And what does Jehu do? The moment he gets the instruction from Elijah, Jezebel, the Bible says, jumped on his chariot and he drove like a madman. Like some of you drive in the highway. <laughs> Not 160, 250. He drove like a madman. I wonder how that looks to drive in a chariot like a madman. That's what the Bible says. And it's amazing. And listen to this. Verse 15 of 1 Kings 19 says, And those of the Jezebel spirit that King Hazel misses and does not kill, Jew will kill. And that who Jehu misses, Elisha will kill. So God is very, very serious to kill this thing completely off because it's a spirit that is directly from Satan, out the heart of Satan, against all forms of authority. And then it begins to multiply like an octopus and it begins to control and it manipulates. It comes from insecurity, rejection. It creates rebellion. It creates stubbornness. And you become the most awful person out. But what you don't even know, you are instrument in the hand of Satan directly destroying your family destroying a church destroying yourself I end off by the words of Jesus what he said in Revelation he said if you do not deal with this thing I will deal with you Revelation 2 verse 21 and I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality and she did not repent Indeed, I will cast into a sick bed and those, look at those words, and those who commit adultery with her. So you, 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 you do it with her and you tolerate her. You allow her. Verse 18 before it says it more clearer. 
into great tribulation unless they repent of their deeds. I will kill her children and with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he who searches the minds and the hearts, and I will give to each one according to your works. So you want freedom from Jezebel? Is Jezebel attacking you? You want freedom? I don't want to say to you, you better get into a place of solitude. That means hear from God. Go and sit and say, God, Pastor Carl preaches this thing of his Jezebel attacking me. Yes, I feel so. Lord, my mother is a controlling mother and my father rejected me like Queen Jezebel. Maybe in your life like that. And I was heavily wounded and I was left on myself and what, 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 what. And you open yourself to all the chokos. You never dealt with it. Never, never dealt with it. So you become like the Leviathan spirit and that's something I will preach on later. But it, it becomes so bad that, that the chokos are just added the whole time. The devil says he has another demon for you. He has another evil spirit for you. He just adds the whole time. Amen. Hear from God. Number two, seek godly counsel. Go and talk to godly people. Emphasis on godly. Leaders that are spiritual. Leaders that know what they're talking about. Leaders that are clean. And there's a track record of integrity before God. Clean. Repent for tolerating Jezebel in your life and in your family and in your church. I've repented. After I was finished with the sermon, I repented. I repented. I repented before God. I said openly, James 5, 16. Openly I repented. I said, Lord, forgive me for tolerating the Jezebel spirit in this church when I was senior pastor. Forgive me for tolerating it because I did not recognize it, Lord. I, I think I was, I was too dull in the spirit to recognize it. You see, if you have a pastor or an apostolic figure that's not honest with you, then you should not have them. Just kick them out. So I repented before God. I said, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. I repent for tolerating this Jezebel spirit in this church. Even amongst the leaders, if they are. I said, Lord, speak to me. Who are they? Who are they? I want to know. I want to know, Lord. I want to know who they are. I want to deal with it. I will not tolerate it. Because if I tolerate that, I expose you all. You become and those. I expose you to the judgment of God. Where it says, I will cast you in a sick bed and you'll have great tribulation. You like that? And I'll kill your children with death and I'll kill all your children, 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 children. children. No, 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 no. I cannot allow that. Otherwise, I'm not a good father. Amen? Hallelujah. I end with the following. Pray fervently. And break the power of Jezebel and Satan after you've repented. And then you take action. And you sort out and you, you address those people directly and you handle it. And God is with you. Because God was with Elijah. He'll be with me. Amen. You'll be with Pastor Gebhardt. You'll be with his team. You still love me? You see, in this church, we said more than once, we will pre preach the truth of the word of God and the truth only. And I end off by saying to you, after this thing is broken in your life, you will rejoice. You will have breakthrough. You will have freedom. You, you may even have financial release in places where things have not happened. You will have progress and unity and growth. You will have life. And your unexpected good will come from God because there's things being held back and you don't know what is holding it back. Is that true? Some of you sitting here waiting for breakthroughs, you've got no idea why what is happening to you now today with this sermon and that's amen today with this sermon i've exposed jezebel to you that you will know whether jezebel is attacking you yes or no give god the glory thank you father will you stand with me let's just pray together thank you father thank you father Father, I pray for every person in this body of Christ, every person that's here, Lord. Father, I bring everyone before you. Father, thank you that you speak to us as you spoke to King David. Thank you, Lord, that you expose. Lord, you say that you are the one that knows the days of tomorrow, John 16, 13. And thank you, Holy Spirit, that you expose the works of Jezebel in the New Testament times to us. 
Father, thank you that you make us understand. Father, I pray for every person in this body of Christ that you will open their spiritual eyes and spiritual ears. And I pray for every single one that they will go to action immediately and eradicate this and speak about it and confront it and not tolerate it and not allow it any further in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. Father, I pray for your people. Strengthen each one of them, Lord. Strengthen them in these days not to be afraid, but, Father, to handle the matter because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. With my God, I jump over a wall and I storm the army. Father, thank you that we can rejoice in you. And Father, I pray for your people that you'll help each one of us to be free of the satanic influence like it was through Jezebel and through King Herod and even through Jonathan. Father, help us to become free. For he who the Son sets free is free indeed in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. And all God's people said, Amen and amen. Give the Lord a praise offering. Thank you so much for joining us for our live stream. We want to encourage you to be a part of all our other live streams that happen in the week. That's Sunday morning, Sunday evening, as well as our service on Tuesday evening. Be a part of the movement and the family that is empowered. You know, we always say, you online are as much a part of the family as the guys here on this campus. So follow us on Instagram, like our page on Facebook, and all you have to do is search for Empowered Church Maine and be a part of that movement. On YouTube, make sure to also search for Empowered Church and click the subscribe button. Make sure you get notified the moment there's any special videos that get uploaded onto our YouTube page. We also want to hear about any testimonies that you might have. Tell us what the Lord has done for you. Share them with us because this is what we call home victories. Our answered prayer for you is a celebration for us. So send us an email at testimony at empowerchurch.co.za. If you've been impacted by this ministry in any way, we want to encourage you to partner with us financially and help us continue delivering God's Word all around the world. All you have to do is visit www.empowerchurch.co.za and find the giving option that works best for you. Thank you so much for joining us. Now go and live the empowered life.